When we say that the police are institutionally misogynist, we're talking about a top to bottom problem of reproducing outcomes which disadvantage and perpetuate violence against women. So we can see that in terms of the internal processes of the police, 52% of officers who were found guilty of sexual misconduct between 2016 and 2020 kept their jobs. The second thing is that you've got an astonishingly regular pattern of cops being accused of domestic violence. Uh, at least one woman a week comes forward accusing officers or police staff of having perpetuated domestic violence. And then you've also got what is it they're actually doing in their job. So there does exist an abuse to prison pipeline where women who have themselves experienced domestic abuse or sexual or physical abuse as children are more likely to end up in prison. So 57% of female prisoners are victims of domestic abuse, 53% experienced abuse as children. So that tells you something about how we treat vulnerable women in our society. Do we care for them or do we criminalize them for that very vulnerability? It's the latter. And then we've got to think about um, those instances where police officers have wielded and abused the authority that they have. And it is a unique authority, it is a uniquely coercive power in order to perpetuate abuse. So Wayne Cousins may have been an extreme case, but he certainly wasn't alone. There was uh, Geoffrey Davies, a detective in South Wales, who used his position as a police officer to rape two women in his custody in the early 2000s. This only came out when he was subsequently convicted of further offences uh, around 2013, I believe. You also had Erling, Erling Liesk, who sexually exploited victims of domestic violence, who again, he came across in the line of duty. And there was also Derek Winston Seekings, who raped a woman while on a meal break from work. And that's before we even get into another story which has been in the news, which is Spy Cops, which is undercover Metropolitan Police officers who conducted uh, long term, in some cases, sexual relationships with women who they were spying on. And this happened either uh, with a nod and the wink from senior officers or due to their incompetence, they didn't even know it was going on. So there is, I think, a much deeper problem of, of misogyny encoded within the police's practices. There is also a problem of the institutional culture within the police. So it's an open secret that you have the dissemination of racist, misogynist and homophobic material within private group chats. That's exactly what Wayne Cousins did with his colleagues who are now facing criminal investigation. But that's also what happened when you had two officers suspended for sharing selfies that they took with the murdered bodies of Bieber Henry and Nicole Smallman. That indicates a very callous and indeed very dehumanizing attitude towards female victims of violence and people who they come across in the course of their work. And then you've also got something which is very disturbing, which a former chief superintendent said on Radio 4 yesterday, which is that even female police officers and staff are discouraged from, from speaking up and reporting uh, abusive or harassing or threatening colleagues, because what happens is if you get a name for yourself as someone who blows the whistle, that those colleagues are more likely to leave you in dangerous and violent situations, essentially to get your head kicked in. So top to bottom, you've got a problem of culture, you've got a problem of outcomes, you've got a problem of internal procedures and practices. And that's what we mean when we say that the police are institutionally misogynist.